I'd like to introduce uh, Jason Kohler. Uh, Jason is a native of the DFW community, and he has graciously um, agreed to give this presentation for us today since we had a talk pull out. Uh, Jason has had some engaging topics, including uh, speaking engagements previously at B-Sides w DFW last year, twice. Was there two, two submissions? Right, so two years in a row. Jason Jason uh, needs not much more introduction. He'll give his own introduction. Let's give a hand for Jason Kohler. Hello. All right, well, today, yes, I'm Jason. This is me. We're going to be talking about uh, badge visual forgery today. Um, some of you may have seen this talk. I've given it at uh, Dallas Hackers Association and a few other places. Anyway, here we go. So, who am I? Uh, I'm Jason. I went to the University of North Texas along with a lot of people in here. A lot of people had classes with me. I'm so sorry. Uh, let's see. My research project for senior design was uh, DHCP for space networks. Uh, that was a lot of fun. I've done SAN Security 401, 504, 560, and 660. So for those of you not familiar with that, that's kind of intro to cyber, uh, basic incident handling, in, intro to pen testing, and advanced pen testing. And I competed in SAN's Networks Tournament of Champions. Uh, you know what that is, because I see what you're wearing. Uh, did, did you do the master's program? OK. That's, that's my goal is to start that next year. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, currently, I work for Trinity Industries. We're the badge sponsor this year. Um, I hope you enjoy the badges. I thought they were different. That's kind of cool. There's stories behind it if you know people that were in the design process, so go hunt them down and ask them questions. Previously, I've worked at uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers and Goldman Sachs. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I mean, assuming Twitter's still there tomorrow. I don't know what's going on, but, you know, whatever. I'm pretty easy to find, hopefully. All right, so what are we going to talk about today? Why? Why do you want to visually forge a badge? What purpose does it serve you? And then we're going to go into how you get a design because you know you need something to replicate if you're going to do replication. And then uh, how I do my digital mockups in preparation for creating the physical copy and a couple of stories of how I've done this. And oh, we are not doing a live demo. I apologize that uh, I did not come prepared for this. I got the call about an hour ago saying, hey, Jason, you want to fill a slot? And here I am. So I don't have all my toys. Uh, these are slides from, like I said, a previous, previous time I've given this talk. And then we'll talk about some more advanced stuff that uh, I didn't do in those stories, but uh, we've got some access to some new stuff that uh, makes this all way more convincing. All right, so let's get right into it. Why? Why would you want to um, do badge forgery? In short, if you're doing a physical pen test, a physical assessment of the security posture of an organization, uh, being able to give a visual cue and indication of, hey, I belong here, uh, people ask less questions when they already believe you there. And the more things they can see that fit in, the, the fewer questions I ask. So um, if I was to walk into a bank in shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops and say, hey, I'm actually uh, one of your biggest clients, uh, I need to go talk to the general manager and, and check on your servers to make sure they're up to snuff for this business I'm starting. Not a lot of people are going to buy that, unless maybe I live in Silicon Valley or whatever, right? Then I could maybe pull that off, do the turtleneck thing. But you got to know your targets, right? And so in addition to dressing for your physical engagements, it also helps to be able to show that you belong. And so that's going to be determined by what your cover story is and how you're going in. And in some cases, you can actually become an internal authority from that organization. And we'll talk about a few times where I've done that. <clears throat> okay, so how do you find a design for a badge to replicate? If you're going to make a thing, you got to know what you're making. Otherwise, it's just arts and crafts, which is perfectly cool, but not really applicable for what we're trying to do here. So a couple of ways that have worked for me on how you get a design to replicate, you can just straight up ask for it. You can ask the uh, your, your target for a copy of the badge to replicate. It saves a lot of time. We'll get into how to do that. There's open source intelligence. For those of you who don't know what that is, it's basically fancy Google. Um, ways to find things online to, to go replicate. And then uh, you can just show up on site and maybe catch someone in, in, with, a, with a picture of their badge. So let's go into some examples of that. Asking for it. Obviously, the easiest way to get a copy of a badge to replicate. Um, hit and miss on a success rate, but like if you can get it, it makes it so much easier. The, um, the, the, the best times to be doing that is during your scoping call for the engagement 
or uh, during a statement of work and negotiations. Basically, you can sell this to your client that you're doing the target, that you're, that you're doing the, the physical assessment for is, hey, I could spend a week and get anything. I could get so many great pictures hanging out. I could probably, you know, buy a copy online, you know, all this stuff, right? But that's gonna take time for me. And time for me means dollars for you. So I can save you how many thousands of dollars if we just do this up front. Let's just assume that I'm gonna get what I'm after because it's pretty simple, right? There's other ways for me to do this. It's gonna happen if I really want to, but how much time do you wanna pay me to go do the thing? Uh, I've had really good success with, with selling it like that. Uh, about any order of 80 to 90% success rate with that. And generally, whoever I'm working with, uh, building the contract, uh, writing out the statement of work, they usually just straight up say, yeah, sure, we'll send you a picture with like redacted information and whatnot, that kind of thing not had any problems there so give it a try saves you some time saves some effort and it can lead to a better quality starting image for your badge uh, the other options are uh, open source intelligent commonly referred to as OSINT lots of ways you can do this do searches for uh, first day badge ID that kind of thing a lot of people still don't understand uh, how sensitive those those badges can be and they get excited and they post pictures of their badge on their first day um, part of that goes into education and training your users. Part of that goes into the risk tolerance of the organization. So some organizations that I've been at, they have got full um, I-class RFID badges that you have to badge into the building and badge out of the building. And it's single individuals. There's no way you can tailgate through that. And they have physical security guards watching you do this. So there's, there's really no way to, um, to, to sneak through that way. So... Sometimes that's the risk acceptance a company will take. Uh, other times, not so much. There's other companies where it's literally you're just wearing your visual indication and there's no physical blocking to get into the into the structure. Places to look, Twitter, well, previously. We'll see how that goes. Instagram, uh, and definitely Google. Uh, I found uh, you, Google's actually worked really well for me. Um, if I don't find something on Twitter or Instagram, uh, I found a couple instances where a blog or a news site will have a picture of somebody with their badge hanging out and I can get a pretty good replica from that. All right, let's talk a little bit more about OSINT. So 2020 recently happened and that means the 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 every decade census and uh, the US Census put out this lovely YouTube video about how to identify a census agent to know that you can trust them. <laughs> yes, really. And these are the three examples of they said what to look for. We've got a bag that says US Census, we got a laptop with a fancy sticker on it, and here's what our ID cards look like. Well, as a resident of, yeah, as a resident of whatever address that said census agent is coming to validate, probably doesn't have an RFID reader with a connection back to the US Census, or census Bureau to uh, validate any RFID, and all you've got is visual, and you've just shown the whole world what this looks like. And let's be real, that is not a complicated design to, to uh, replicate. That's, uh, that's pretty straightforward. We've got a couple of uh, uh, seals from the organization, which are probably a Google or two away to get those images. Um, we've got an individual's face shot there. I can slap mine on there pretty easy. Uh, effective dates, uh, maybe I run off three or four copies with different dates, just depending on what I'm doing, right? So this would be pretty trivial to replicate, right? You, you, can, you can see all this, there's nothing crazy. There's no holographs going on here. There's no tamper evident, tamper resistant features here. But this, is, this is pretty straightforward, right? A uh, little more detail, right? So if I want to go look the part in addition to having the ID badge, I can whip up a bag that screams US Census. I have not done the research to determine what type of laptop that is, but if I had to guess, that's a Dell. Just, just looking at it quickly. Probably not hard to go find one of those somewhere, uh, eBay, wherever. Obviously, you know, the time has passed and being a US Census Bureau employee is probably not gonna get me anywhere. But you know, hey, maybe they do the same thing in 2030, right? There's a couple instance, other instances where uh, I've seen high profile organizations that are sending people out to people's homes and businesses uh, publish this kind of information of how to tell it's actually us and the how to tell it's actually us is pretty easy to spoof then there's the other option of uh, you know instead of doing your own OSINT you go 
you look at other experts, like here's one, uh, a slide from Deviant Olm Olm's talk, uh, I'll Let Myself In, the, the second version, and he's got this lovely slide with a bunch of different badges that he makes for himself on how to get in. In this case, they're vendor badges, right? So you show up, any structure that's probably more than three stories has an elevator, probably. So uh, that Otis elevator technician will probably get you into most of those. Everyone's got internet, right? So we've got Comcast, Time Warner Cable, and any of those, you just find out who the who the service providers are in that area. It's pretty easy to get in there. And then there's other options here. Uh, he's got some media stuff. You know, just go play, have fun, right? Um, printer servicing could be interesting if you're the guy from HP here to service the printers. That has potential. But all sorts of options you can d depending on what your cover is from where you're going in. All right, for photography, I've never had to try this. I know people who have done this, but I've never been in a situation where I couldn't get my design other ways but uh, from those I've talked to there's lots of ways to do this basically you get yourself a nice camera uh, I had one person pose as a member of the student newspaper for whatever university he was trying to get into and interview people specifically that were their badges up high and asked if he could get their picture for the uh, for the school newspaper and in the process of taking some nice you know headshots did a nice zoom in on the badge right super easy to do that uh, pick your target get your cover story easy enough right uh, other places to look uh, public spaces in the buildings where your target is so especially in a lot of multi-tenant office buildings where you have a bunch of different businesses uh, nothing stopping you from hanging out in the library depending on how the access control is there's nothing stopping you from riding the elevator up and down um, elevator is a public space right because it goes to multiple companies then there's no way to tell who's who and where yeah, tram system going to and from, buses, yeah, lots of options, right? Um, coffee shops nearby, uh, across the street, is there a favorite spot these people hang out? Where do all the teams from that company go for happy hour afterwards? Probably somewhere nearby. Yeah. Yes. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> And then, then there's the thing, like, right there, after your friends, you bring your badge and you try and badge in. Oh, my badge isn't working. Dude, can you, hold, can you get me in? Yeah, or I left it at my desk. Yeah. Right? I'm new. That's why you don't know me. So lots of options there for uh, where you can go to get that photography for that sample image. Once you have your sample image, uh, I do a digital mock-up because, you know, it's easier than the old school of literally cutting and pasting things, right? We live in 2022. Let's, you know, let's use these fancy new fangled machines we hit called computers. Uh, my tool of choice is Microsoft Publisher. So what I will do is um, these are the dimensions of your standard card size. So you create a new page in the template system for these dimensions, and that should fit any regular card size. Um, I have yet to come across an organization that uses a non-standard card size. I'm sure they're out there. Just hasn't happened to me yet. Uh, from there, you import the picture of your badge, and then I like to set it as transparent so I can see the image behind, um, or the, the, the page template behind the image. What? Yes, right, and so then I can align the corners of my badge with the corners of the page. Uh, from there, I'll kind of crop it down, whatever, reset the transparency back to full because I want the image to be uh, as opaque as, as it regular is. And then I start dragging in the elements for my badge on top of it. And I'll set those to be like a half transparency so I can see where the overlap is and drop things in here. Um, I am the type that will try every font that looks remotely close just to get the closest one there is. Uh, I'm just super determined like that. Not always necessary. You can go with good enough. I'm just, you know, persistent like that. Um, not advanced, definitely persistent. Maybe a threat. Depends on how much you pay me. Um, let's see. From there. Oh, yeah. Fonts. Meh, image. Okay, so logos, super easy to find, right? Every company has a fantastic marketing division, a PR department who publishes high-res uh, logos with transparent backgrounds and PNG. Super easy to get logos. The, the places where I've had the most challenges are extra graphical elements. So if you look at uh, I don't know, default credit cards from banks, uh, a lot of badges 
have like extra swirly bits and there's like some artistic flourishes in there. And me, with my background in computer stuff, uh, specifically the, you know, the engineering side, I don't know what all those things are called. So I don't know what term to Google for uh, whatever flourish or whatever graphical element that I'm looking for. So what I've done is I got some friends who are graphic designers and graphic artists and I will go to them and I say, hey, here's a cropped version of the thing I'm looking for. What would I call this? How do I go find one of these? And they'll say, oh, try looking for this thing and I'll find something that looks just about perfect. And that's worked really well. Um, I should also specify I do that so that I'm not making a copy of a copy. It looks a little more crisp that way. But you could probably get away with using your photo of the badge for a lot of that. Uh, some of these badges have face shots. Just take note of what backgrounds they're using. Is it just some random face shot at some random wall, or do they have those fancy blue screen background things? And just try and replicate that as best you can. Drop it in there. When it comes to trying to turn this digital mock-up into a physical replica, uh, what you're going to do is take it and go print it out. Um, take note of where you're printing. The self-services make it easier, but I've had situations where, um, especially in the smaller towns, Sometimes it depends on what's around, right? I've been sometimes we're in the middle of nowhere and it's, it's hard to get that. Um, to take it a step further, in those small towns where I'm in the middle of nowhere, I've had things say, hey, I noticed you're printing whatever logo. Do you know whoever, whoever? Because uh, we need to get permission from some of them. I'm like, that's pretty cool that they took that extra step to speak with uh, the people at the printing places to, to know that the logos run. Um, there's ways around that, right? Bring your own printer, whatever. Go to the next town over. All sorts of options. Uh, we had a question. They're what? Clone the cards. Places? Lowe's? Like the hardware store. RFIDs. Yeah, fobs. I never thought about that. You're right. So I know they do like for car keys and stuff. That makes sense. I had never considered. Okay. I know what I'm doing this week. That's really cool. Like I've always, you know, absolutely copy your house key, whatever. Mag strip could be cool, but like a, a lot of the fobs do the RFID thing, right? And so if they're cloning fobs. That's what that is. But we'll talk about that. We'll talk about fobs a touch in the advanced section. And uh, does anyone know what this, this little guy is? These new flipper zeros? Who's, who, who's is stuck in uh, shipping and customs still? Yeah, it's the worst. Sorry, guys. I know. Um, where were we? Cloning, cloning, cloning. Anyway, okay, yeah, so I have to try the fob thing and see if it works. Because some, some of our – I'm currently studying how to clone RFID badges – and some of them have certain encryption bits behind them, and it's not as simple as just popping it. You gotta do some, do some stuff. Uh, Rexer, is that is that in agreement or or? Yeah. 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 There's some extra steps for that, depending on what card system you're using. Uh, but that is something I'm in the middle of learning and not an authority on, so we're not going to talk about that right now. Okay, so physicals. Um, I start with gift cards. I like gift cards that kind of have a white, uh, as much white to them as possible, so Starbucks has worked well for me. Um, i trying to think of where else. You can just straight up buy these on Amazon, too. Just buy blank. Yeah. Yeah, and to take it a step further, like if you know what RFID style they're using, you can just go buy a bunch of those for blanks. They're not that expensive, and they'll come out perfectly white. Uh, so I'll, I'll print out the thing, like, on a physical printer, like an old school, you know, HP, brother, whatever. Um, and then I usually use double-sided sticky tape to stick it on there. And what I've found is, after I made a couple of these, the fewer connections you have between the tape, the better it tends to look. So running the tape lengthwise across the card sends, seems, seems to work better. And so I'll just slap the card on the table, and I'll, like, overlay it. And then I'll go in with like an X-Acto knife and trim the excess. And that seems to work really well. And then uh, slap on your printed dealio, trim off the extra paper. Works pretty well. And then I'll usually take an adhesive laminate of some kind and slap it on the front so it looks kind of glossy. Looks as if it was printed. 
and uh, I've gotten to a lot of places doing just that. Uh, on the sticky tape, it's better to have gaps between your tape than it is to have overlap. It just looks better that way. I don't have a good answer for why. That's just... Yeah. Okay, so how I've used this. Story time, right? Um, where are we in time? Oh, we got plenty of time. We might even be early. Let's see. Uh, three main places that I've used this. Uh, I had an educational uh, facility that I was uh, asked to go do an assessment on. So I wrote up a set of uh, malware on a USB stick and kind of titled it to make it look like a Microsoft update. Kind of titled it KB number and picked a random article. Something that no one else would know, but if anyone was the least bit technical, they'd be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a KB article. We're good. Um, basically, all it really did was capture the IP address, the MAC address, who was logged in, what their permissions were, that kind of thing. Uh, I went to this educational place um, with my little badge on a lanyard that said I was Jason from IT. Oh, that's another thing. Um, Whenever I'm doing these, I found it's best if you only tell two lies, and that is who I actually work for and what I'm actually doing. And everything else, you get the real Jason, just because it's it's way easier to... It's hard to remember lies, and I'm just not good at it at all. So that just makes it easier for me. Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> once I got in... Uh, I actually spent like half hour just chatting with one someone in their office about my life story and it was it was it was, it was hilarious I had a good time I kind of feel bad about it but oh well um, so anyway yeah so I walk in and the first person you see when you walk into one of these things right is the the admin person who's there you know the gatekeeper right because how do you get through to authority you go through the admin person and I basically just thir spent 30 minutes chatting with this this admin admin person saying hey I'm Jason I'm the new IT guy um, you know, just started, you know, first day they said I got to go do this thing, uh, made friends with this person enough that they walked me around the, the, the whole building office to office saying, Hey, this is Jason from IT. He's got an update for your computer. And it worked really well. Um, yeah, definitely make friends with the admin people cause they are always the source of all true power in any organization. <laughs> Those of you who've worked in organizations of any size know exactly what I'm talking about. If you want to get anything done, you, you make friends with that person. Um, so yeah, that worked really well, had a good time, uh, basically got everyone, because now I no longer need to pose as the authority, I have the authority introducing me to everyone, and then I look legit because I got my badge too. Um, so that worked really well until I got to HR. <laughs> and my issue with HR was not that they didn't buy my story at all, well, not entirely, um, there was a whole thing of like, oh, wow, we never saw your application come through. When did you start? How did this happen? Did you bring your voided check? Do you have your W-2? No. <laughs> I didn't think that far ahead. Um, so me being the new employee and have none of your traditional new employee stuff was, you know, obviously surprising to HR. I managed to string them along for about an hour before they tried to look me up in their system. And then when we looked at me up in their backup system, and that was when it all fell apart. But I, I was very proud of how far I got with that. So short answer is just leave HR alone. Um, <laughs> that worked, that, worked, that went pretty well. Um, at that point, that's when the admin lady figured out, oh, this is not legit. And she went back to her desk and did her thing. And I just kept going. Um, you know, we pull out the, the letter from the, the, the CISO saying, hey, this is Jason. He's doing a thing. You know, if you catch him, call me to verify, but leave him alone, let him do his stuff. Um, yeah, so I kept going, basically got the rest of the building um, until I got to legal. And then head of legal, <laughs> head of legal looks at me and says, uh-huh, who do you work for again? And I gave him the name of, like, the person I found on LinkedIn, right? And uh, he's like, okay, let me call him real quick. And he gets out his phone and starts dialing numbers and like, no, that's okay. I got his number right here for you. Let me, let me just, you know, cause he obviously knew the right number. The number I had was for my manager back home, wherever that was. And he was supposed to pose as the manager for me. Um, and he, the, the head of legal looked at me and was like, oh, okay, all right, let's try this. And he dials a number just to see what happens. He, I was already made, it was too late. I was the point I was just, how far could I string it along? Uh, Dial's the manager. Manager forgot that I was doing that that day, so answered with his actual name. <laughs> My manager actually answered with his actual name. Um, <laughs> uh, lawyer played along and said, oh, hello, the name he was expecting, right? 
<laughs> it was it was it was, a good, it was pretty funny. I had a good time. Eventually, we pulled out the letter. He called the actual guy, validated whatever all that stuff. Turns out he was good friends with the actual CISO, and so you know knew that voice sounded nothing like his friend. Uh, we had a good time. Turns out his spouse does the same thing, so he knew exactly what to look for when I walked in. Got to watch out for that. So sometimes it happens. Yeah. Oh, the ones that knew? Yeah. The ones that found me? Like the two HR people and the one legal out of 500-ish people? No. No. Um, none of that. Uh, Carrie, how are we on time? Do I get until 5.30 or when do I stop? 5.20. 5.20. Okay, good to know. Fantastic. Thank you. Where were we? Yes. Um, yeah, no, just those two people. And then once they actually talked to the CISO from the letter that I had, my get-out-of-jail-free card, they were basically like, oh, okay, go do your thing. Have fun. Uh, actually, fun story, because uh, the next step of this engagement was a Wi-Fi assessment that I was just not getting any traffic on, because you got to capture your traffic so you can crack it and get the get get the the password and all that stuff uh, to the Wi-Fi. And I was not getting any traffic, and I tried like five or six places on campus, and I could not get anyone connected to that Wi-Fi to capture the traffic. And so as I was kind of wandering around, I stopped by and talked with my HR people, who are my friends now. <laughs> because I make friends everywhere. And they're like, oh yeah, that's been broken for months. No one uses that Wi-Fi. So there's nothing to test because like there's no traffic to encrypt and yeah, it was a mess. It was a mess. Um, anyway, so that was that. I eventually got to the, the pro host and the dean and their admins and got all their stuff. Dean actually put in her password for me. It was, it was a good time. Uh, so that was the municipal, uh, the, the educational facility I did. Uh, municipal was a little more fun. It was a police station. And so, um, yeah, I was going into a building where most of them, most of the employees were armed and, you know, that. So I kind of made sure, like, look, here's the deal. I will do this, but police chief gets a letter saying, this is Jason. Here's his picture. This is who he actually works for. This is what he's actually doing. This is the cover store he's coming with, and these are his targets and, you know, all that goodness. So he knows exactly what's going on. And this goes to the chief's number two, and I get a letter signed by the chief and his number two saying this is what I'm doing. So if I almost, if I get something pointed at me, I can say, check my back pocket, please. <laughs> I'm not moving. Um, wasn't necessary. Walked in, made friends with the admin person. They were cool. Not cool enough to walk me around and, you know, introduce me to everyone, but still cool. Um, Got a bunch of the officers and hey, Jason from Municipal IT. They sent me down to run this update. Uh, police don't know Municipal IT. How are they going to know if it's my first day or not? I was just Jason from IT. Ran my stuff. Um, everybody was a local admin. That was cool. <laughs> so the things I could have done. Anyway, so made a bunch of friends. Gave people my phone number. You know, did my thing, went to lunch. I'm at lunch in my car, sweating bullets. Like, oh, I didn't get shot yet, thank goodness. <laughs> um, I was oh, I was terrified. Um, couldn't eat, I was too scared. Uh, get a text saying, hey Jason, this is uh, so-and-so. Uh, new, new shift came on and they all need your update. I'm like, fantastic, let's go. <laughs> so now I had other officers introducing me to the next shift and doing things. Um, eventually got into the command center with all the cameras and the, the, the feed and everything. That was a fun selfie. Um, can't show that, obviously, because it's all their cameras. Uh, I helped a bunch of people figure out the new time card system because I'm the IT guy and I'm supposed to know how that works. I'd never seen it before in my life. Got all that fixed for them. Don't know how that happened, but, you know, whatever. Got a radio. Got the keys to the squad cars. Ran out of time and couldn't steal a squad car, unfortunately. It was like I had 30 minutes. I, um, I had a pretty broad scope. I was told to do whatever I could. Yes. Did you have any challenges with like maybe their you know, IR people because they were using maybe a uh, There were none of those at this particular facility. Okay. Uh, but that's a really good question. I did not even anticipate that. Yeah, because they would probably be more likely to talk to IT people. Yeah, yeah, DFIR, DFIR, well actually actual forensics would definitely be, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Nope, did not run across any of them at this location. But uh, I'll keep that in mind for next time. Uh, yeah, so I had only a few minutes left by the time I got the squad car keys, and I kind of had, like, higher impact. Like, that would have been fun to, like, drive away with the sirens and lights going. That's That would be obviously high impact, but, like, not actual, not of actual value. Does that make sense? Um, 
as cool as that would be. So at that point, I had like just barely enough time. So I walk into the chief's office because I got nothing better to do. I already got everyone else and clean desk except for this one paper on it. And you know what that paper was? It was a letter saying, here's Jason. He's coming <laughs> that I insisted he have. Um, so I walk up and I'm like, well, we'll see what happens. I'm like, hey, I'm Jason from IT. I got an update for your computer. So your internet keeps working when Microsoft changes the Dewey dad next week and, you know, changes the network protocol and TCP and DHCP and yada, yada. And he says, he looks at me and he says, uh-huh. And I'm sitting here with my nice little badge on my lanyard saying, you know, whatever municipal city I was working for. And he says, can I see your ID, please? And I'm like, yeah, hey, here you go. And he's like, no, 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 your actual ID. And I'm like, oh, okay. Driver's license, here you go. And that goes back to two lies, only two lies ever, who I actually work for and what I'm actually doing. So my employee badge had my actual name. And so it matched my ID. Um, he was still a little skeptical, but he said, oh, okay, can I, see, can I see your update? And I give him the stick. And he plugs it in and he runs it himself. And bingo, bango. I'm like, thank you, sir. Have a nice day. You should be good to go. If you have any questions, give us a call. We'll be back out and take care of you. And I walk out the door leave his office, sweating bullets again, uh, walk down the hall, out the front door, and he pops out of his office with his little little paper with my name on it, and he says, hey, hey, hey is this you? And I'm like, yes, sir, thank you very much, have a nice day. <laughs> and I was gone as fast as I possibly could. Uh, how are we in time? Oh yeah, we got time for the last one. Okay, energy, um, this one was, this one was a fun one. They were really well locked down. So um, I had uh, heard, through the grapevine that they had just recently put in a bunch of new cubicles and run electrical for that recently. So I went to Home Depot and bought myself a high-vis vest and a hard hat and some electrical testy tools and said, hi, I'm Jason. I'm here from whatever, I think I said, I think I said I was from the city again, here to, to do the inspection to validate your electrical to make sure it doesn't burn the building down. Um, and uh, this one, this facility was really interesting because the elevators come up and they go to what's essentially public hallways and then their office was split between the two sides and so you had to uh, you had to authenticate in through the doors to get both sides they had this really cool uh, way to access the doors and it wasn't the RFID badge they had these scramble pads and so they're basically the the, the number pad where you punch in the numbers right but what you do is you punch the number to turn it on and the LED lights for the badge show the lights and so because they have that, they can now put them in different positions every time. And so you can't watch from the side to see which angle they're pushing and get their number because they have the um, privacy screen, right? So you can only see it if you're right in front of it. You just see them pushing buttons. And if they do the same code, five seconds later, it's gonna be a different pattern. I thought that was the coolest thing. I've never, yeah, right? Yes, I've, I've, I've never seen that anywhere else, just that one place. I thought it was the coolest thing. Um, yes, exactly, right? So there's the, the UV powder, right, where you sprinkle it on there and you look for the finger? Useless. But uh, I, I digress. So I thought it was really cool. Um, anyway, so I, I get in through admin. They actually badge you. They, they, they camera, and you have to call in to get in from the lobby to the admin. So there's not even anyone out there. Weirdest thing. Never seen that before either. And uh, I said, hey, Jason, I'm here to check your wiring, make sure you don't burn the place down, and, you know, get you signed off. And uh, admin looked at me and said, uh, okay, let me, let me call someone for you. So I'm like, okay, I have no idea who's coming now, so we'll see. Um, they told me that they had actually already had that done, so that didn't work. So it turns out at that point the uh, USB sticks I had dropped in the, in the public bathrooms and the parking lots had already freaked everyone out, and they were already on high alert, which is why they were doing the call someone thing. So didn't work, but they caught me. Um, even funnier, like I hadn't even pulled out my employee I bet I had made. My plan was once I get in, then I change into my professional clothes, you know, do the whole take off the high vis and like now I'm in a button down and stuff. Uh, and then I've got an employee badge. Turns out that would have spoiled it anyway because their badge reader had broken years ago. So even though I found a copy online, if I'd been walking around with a, with a new employee badge, they'd be like, where did you get that? <laughs> It wasn't even the old logo. It was their badge reader. Just their badge printer didn't work for the longest time, and so they weren't making new badges. So most of the employees didn't even have badges. Where the heck are employee ID badges? I, 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 that's a fantastic question. I never even got that far. I don't know what they're using for employee ID. Okay. Anyway, so that's that. We got ten minutes. Let's uh, hit some more stuff. Advanced techniques. Okay. So you can actually just straight up go buy badge printers. 
and not do the the paper print adhesive what you just go buy one of those and print them. they're a little more expensive but if you're doing any kind of volume of this it may be worth it you're probably gonna gonna get a higher quality print on the badge because it's built for that there's a dpi limit on the on the traditional printers it can have issues um, we talked a little bit about what I've been studying with uh, RFID and HID badges and how those work. We've got these new uh, Ponogachi things where you can clone cards. I've already got my Makerspace card cloned in here. Uh, obviously, I can show you, but, you know, come see me later. Uh, I'll show you how to do it. It's pretty neat. And then there's a, that cool Proxmark tool, which will let you do the reading, the decrypting, the analysis, and then writing and, and emulating badges. Really cool stuff. I'm just absolutely fascinated by that, and I wish I had more time to play with it. But uh, I intend to incorporate that in my next physical assessment. Um, given that we're recording, I'm not going to talk about that at all. Because uh, <laughs> yes, uh, right now I'm using the three. I think the, didn't the four just just come out, or is it about to come out? Or am I making stuff up? Huh? I think it's already released. Been released? Okay, cool. I may have to see if I can get my hands on that. Uh, let's see what we got next. Oh, okay, questions. And this is me, if you want to get in touch. Yes, yes. Uh, what do you use on your USB drive? Oh, um, depends. So sometimes it's just uh, um, the thing that looks like a Microsoft update um, and then writes to a log file based on the data it grabs. Sometimes it's a phone home. You can do that in Metasploit. It's fairly straightforward where you can set up a, uh, a server to phone home to and then a nice little, you drop it in a macro and call it, you know, salaries or something, resumes, whatever. There's, there's lots of options for that. But typically I just write something that writes to a log file on the USB stick. Just kind of to, to prove I was there type thing. But, uh, and then also depends on the scope of your engagement, right? So if the scope allows for it, you can put the phone home, whatever it is on there and, and have it right yeah so it calls home downloads the malware and now you have access from remote and if you've got kind of a blended operation now you can have a, a pen tester sitting on the back who didn't come on the on the thing and they can actually start breaking into stuff and now you can demonstrate the uh the chain of like hey we went from this guy got in the door to now we're in your mainframe we didn't even you know get to your your server room what's up Yeah. Yes. I haven't. It's more of a can I get to the place type thing. Okay. Can I run a thing on this computer? Um, I have not done a whole lot of looking for paper things. Uh, it's just kind of a more of a proof of concept. Can I do this? I'll be honest. Uh, physicals are not common. Most places are going to want a, a network pen test or a web app pen test, something like that. It's uncommon for an organization to budget the money for a physical assessment. So I've only done a handful of them, and that's just kind of, they don't come, come around very often. So hit and miss. Yes? Oh, no, I've never done anything quite that advanced. Um, it's usually pretty sufficient to show them the log file saying, hey, I got 523 people today. You know, <laughs> this is what we could have done with that because they're all local admins, you know, but uh, I, I've not actually gotten that far. And it goes back to the limit of scope for the physicals. Uh, I'll be honest, I am very lucky if I get eight hours on site. A lot of these are like four hours on site with some prep work, so... There's not a lot of time to go do a lot of play. All right, any other questions? Anything from the Discord? Or are we on, are we on Discord? I don't even know. Okay. Well, cool. If there's no more questions, I guess that's it for me.